for those of you guys again who be emailing me talking about oh my god how can you really sit there and laugh at a black man's demise baby if that black man is a predator i am throwing a party okay why not we I will be celebrating all. It might be April Fool's month, but you can't fool my black woman month. Okay? These diamonds on my body and they crystal clear. I make magic with these hundreds, watch them disappear. Uh-huh. Big ol' raindrops up in my ear. If you gon' name drop, let's get it clear. Just in Thank you so much for coming back to my Chanel. Welcome. If you're new here, make sure that you subscribe so you can join the Black Women's Tribe during Black Women's I'm a Survivor Month. Okay? It is officially April is National Sexual Month. And um, as a sexual survivor, it's only right that we, you know, celebrate that. And also, we are still within Black Women's Black Ramadan Month for another week. Is Tokum X still selling Islam dinners? Did any of y'all go on an Islam dinner tour? Did y'all go on an Islam dinner tour? Let me know. <laughs> but we're still in Black Women's Black Ramadan Month, okay? Um, so thank you so much for being here with me. All right, two things before we get into today's stuff, right? I am going to Cartagena, Colombia. Cartagena, Colombia. We're going in June, okay? So please, if you want to join me in Cartagena, Colombia, go to vocation.net. All of the information for the trip will be on the site, okay? So every question that you need answered will be there. Uh, if you have any extra questions uh, in addition to whatever information is on the site, go ahead and drop us a question and contact us. Uh, somebody... <laughs> Somebody sent a message the other day and said, hey, y'all, I'm just looking for information on the trip. So you came to the site and you didn't, you, you just was like, I, I'm not going, I'm not going to read none of the information. I was like, what is going on? That's the whole purpose of the site. Okay. And I, I paid good money for this website. So I'm going to need y'all to read this website when y'all go to it. Okay. So vocation.net, please. Okay. Also, I am going to Ghana in September. Um, if you want to go with me to Ghana, please go to sortedchalet.com. Ghana, sortedchalet. Cartagena, vocation.net. Ghana, sortedchalet.com. Cartagena, vocation.net. Okay? Please. Let's please, okay? Please. All right? Let's make the continents meet, people. All right? Let's make the continents meet. Um... Yeah, I'm really, really excited about taking these trips, and I cannot wait to spend time with y'all. Also, I do have a membership, a membership gang right here on YouTube. So next to my name, you should be able to see a button that says join. Some of you haven't been able to see it. I know for sure you can see it from your laptop or from a computer. I'm not sure why you're not seeing it from your phone or your tablet, but usually I can see it from my tablet too. So I don't know if maybe it depends on what country you're in. I, I, some of you tell me that you don't have the option to do that in your country. So I am thinking about doing a Patreon just for those of you guys who can't access and just putting the same things on, on, on both and you just pick whatever you'd like to do. So uh, I'm going to be asking my friend to help me set up my Patreon because child, I'm, I'm old child. I'm turning 68 this year. I, I, the, the internet is just, it's a lot for me. Okay. Um, all right, y'all. So without further ado, let's get into the news. This episode of Just a Couple of Things, y'all. <laughs> All right, y'all. It's so much Diddy news to catch up on, y'all. Let's just go ahead and jump right on in. Nah, nah, buddy. <laughs> Let's jump right on in. Before I do that, um, let me just say this. I've gotten a couple emails from some of you guys who watch my channel saying, wow, like, you're laughing about a man going to jail. You know, you're laughing at the downfall of a black man. Your demise is just around the corner. And I'm just like, unless y'all know something about me that I don't know. Unless y'all know something about me that I don't know. Because last time I checked, 
can't nobody make these allegations against me, okay? And, 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 and furthermore, anytime you've seen me, anytime you've seen me have a key about any predators going downhill, trust and believe nobody can present those types of allegations towards me, okay? So I don't know what demise y'all talking about. Baby, I get demise online all the time, baby. Candace Owens, her people is tearing my ass up right now just for this joke. So Candace Owens swung by the Breakfast Club recently and it was very disturbing, but I think this has to be the most disturbing part of her interview. Finish this response. God is good. God is good. Amen. Hey! hey Charlamagne, God is good. All the time. And all the time? God is good. That's right. Where's that from? Jesus Church. Christ, Candace. <laughs> How do you feel the nigga meter this badly? Have we checked to make sure there's really a black person in that body? I don't know, bro. I feel like Candace Owens got a zipper in the back of her body. Like, this really might be Rachel Dolezal. Like, <laughs> like this really might be Rachel Dolezal dressed as Candace Owens just to troll us, okay? Because ain't no way. Ain't no way you a black women's and you ain't know the response. Yeah, we're back with one. Hello. Really, Candace? During Black Women's Black Ramadan Month? Maybe the way they tan my ass up and driving up my engagement. As soon as I saw how like this, this is like this is literally like a short that I have here on YouTube Shorts. It has like almost four thousand comments. Maybe the way I sent that video over to my agency. Hey y'all, do y'all see this engagement? What brands can we? <laughs> what brand? Okay, <laughs> baby. Whatever demise y'all talking about, please have it, have it. Please demise me every day. Please drive my engagement up, <laughs> please, okay? The last time I checked, can't nobody, nobody on God's green earth present these types of allegations to me. And as a person who has survived being violated as a child and as an adult, I am always going to laugh at the demise of a predator. Period. I'm always going to rejoice in the Lord. Always. Because again, I say, again, I say, I'm going to rejoice. 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 I'm going to rejoice. Okay? I'm going to rejoice. Now, of course, I have to be clear about these things. When it comes to Diddy, this is all allegations. Okay? Okay? And I, I don't think I've been clear in my other videos, but I just want to make sure I'm clear on this. Allegedly, 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 okay? Allegedly, 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 okay? This is all alleged. This is all alleged, okay? Allegedly, 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 allegedly. This is all alleged. Oh, and I love the whole, oh, but you know, no charges have been filed. Of course, like, do you know how hard it is to get someone who has committed a sexual crime behind bars? Y'all, in the comments, don't believe these victims when they come forward. Y'all don't believe them. Y'all don't even y'all y'all don't be believing your cousins, your sisters, your mamas. Your, like y'all don't be believing your own family members when they tell you about this. And then you guys, everyday people, go into law enforcement. Everyday people go into lawmaking. You take that same mindset into lawmaking. Okay? Have you guys ever taken a moment to think about the fact that the law reflects us? The law reflects what we deem important. Okay, so a lot of you guys don't believe victims when they come forward anyway. Do you guys watch these crime shows? Do you guys watch these true crime shows when sexual victims come forward? Do you guys see the numbers, the, the statistics for these crimes and who actually pays for them? And if everyday people don't pay for these crimes, what do you think? What do you think happens to billionaires and millionaires? If everyday people don't really receive true punishments for committing these crimes, you think billionaires and millionaires are going to face, you think billionaires and millionaires are easily going to face consequences for this? No, no.
They, they tearing down a black man. I'm a young black man. Y'all been making Diddy jokes for 30 years. Literally. I watch y'all. I watch people on the inside of the industry. I watch people on the internet make jokes and make light of everything that people are coming forward and accusing him of. And now, now it's they, 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 they want to see a black man fall. You know, okay. Anyway, before we get into all that, let's talk about um, <laughs> Young Miami took to Twitter child. And she denied the allegations of being um, uh, Diddy's powder puff <laughs> pink Power Ranger girl. Um, so she said this, y'all go for anything on her Twitter. And somebody responded, <laughs> she said, you for that 250K a month. And young Miami responded, that's something the internet made up and y'all ran with it. Niggas don't even pay that for child support. Why the fuck would a nigga ever pay me 250K for? For what? Well, let's go down to the evidence. Let's go to your lyrics on Don't Play With It Remix. Okay? These are your lyrics, Carisha. Maybe they call him Carisha. <laughs> Carisha Maxwell. <laughs> Baby, I hate, I hate this for you. I really do. Cause you girl, oh my God. Um, so these are your lyrics. I ain't got a hundred mil, but I got it once I flew in. If that, if that dick don't come with the money, I can't lay with it, lay with it. He called me baby, so it's 200 a K with it, K with it. Carisha single and sadiddy, he okay with it. No shade with it, no shade with it. Uh, 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 these are your lyrics. He called me baby, so it's 200 a K with it. Are we not living what is in our lyrics? These, these are your lyrics, okay? This, this, is, uh, 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 this, yeah, this is, this is your lyrics, baby. You said it. The internet didn't say this. You said it, okay? All right, so let's just keep that in mind. We didn't say it. You said that. Who said that? You said it, girl. <laughs> you said it in your song. Okay? And here are some people who are saying, well, you know, we shouldn't call her a sex worker or it's not cool that um, Lil Rods named her as a sex worker. You know, a sex worker is somebody you call over, you pay money, and they go on about their business. And that's just simply not true. We're in 2024. In the pandemic, we saw people run to... What's the, what's the, what's the um, OnlyFans? Like, at, like celebrities who we thought were up there getting so much money. We saw them turn into sex workers heavily during the pandemic. So you don't have to be a hooker. You don't have to be a call girl to be a sex worker. Sex work is the oldest profession in the book. You had Jesus down to the woman at the well. You had the woman at the well who the, the town wanted to stone her because she was down to the well selling pussy to the town's husbands. And they was trying to stall her and Jesus came and Jesus was like, well, hold on, well, who's she selling pussy to? Who is she selling pussy to? If she, if she is selling coochie, who is she selling coochie to during Black Women's I'm a Survivor Month? Who buying it? She ain't, she ain't buying her own pussy. She ain't buying her own coochie. Who buying the coochie? If she's selling coochie, who buying the coochie? And when Jesus said that, everybody was quiet. Everybody was quiet. Tukun said, mm, tukun fed jolly. Yeah, no bagazi on ye, hey, whoa. Tukun said, mm. Tukun said, mm. Oh, she down there selling coochie. And he said, you know what? He would all saying, cast the first stone. Couldn't nobody cast a stone because they was all buying coochie. Everybody was buying coochie. They was all buying that lady coochie down to the well, okay? Selling coochie is the oldest job in the book for women, okay? And men too, <laughs> okay? I know a pastor who, <laughs> just watch my L.A. Swindler video, child. Um, but, Here's, here's what 
here's here's why the little rod allegations kind of they kind of land is because you have Carisha who is constantly who constantly the last three years three four years has bragged about this man spending so much money on her we all knew he wasn't her girlfriend for real and when you look at it okay outside of making music okay she had Carisha please Carisha please is not giving you two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a month that's not giving you that right it might bring that in it might bring that in but when you look at Carisha please just look at the credits. There's so many people whose hands are in that pot. You got to pay the producers. You got to pay production, assistance, wardrobe, makeup. It's on Revolt. Revolt gets their cut. At Revolt slash Diddy, aka Diddy, which Diddy is no more because he sold his shares. And we're going to get into his finances later on. But for him to be allegedly, 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 allegedly. Allegedly. This is all alleged. Allegedly giving you that per month. And then the other people that Lil Rod named in the lawsuit as well, who were also working for the label. What that alludes to is that giving you that money, he's using you as a front. He's using you to funnel money from companies that he has no business funneling money to you from. That's what the point is. That's what this all implies. And then of course, remember in Lil Rod's lawsuit, he alleged that her cousin tried to force herself on Lil Rod um, per Diddy, under Diddy's instruction. Did you notice Young Miami never addressed that? Okay. And also let's keep it above when it even comes to her being, you know, his pink Power Ranger, his pink powder puff girl. Listen, it doesn't take much for you to be considered a drug trafficker. Like you don't gotta be Griselda Blanco to be a drug trafficker, okay? As long as you putting that stuff in your down in your purse. Remember, a lot of times when she'll be traveling with Diddy or to Diddy, it would be on a private jet. So you're not going through TSA. So you're able to get stuff on the jet that you wouldn't be able to get through TSA, right? If you're transporting the pink powder over to, to Diddy, that makes you a trafficker. It's really just that simple. Like y'all be thinking that to, to break the law, it's this like elaborate thing that has to happen. No, it's very easy to break the law. Everyday actions can have you breaking the law. Okay. So yeah, girl, you could deny it all you want, but them allegations definitely land and it's just, it, it just doesn't look good for you. And then we still remember, again, we still remember the Gina tweets where you called her, you know, Chun-Li and poor Sushi and where you told her, you know, if Diddy wanted her on her knees, he would have her doing it. Mind you, this is a woman who talked about Diddy, you know, battering her for years. And this is how you were talking to a victim. So it just doesn't look good. It doesn't look good, no matter how you paint it. But, you know, again, this generation is so, like, y'all have romanticized this young Miami Diddy stuff. Y'all y'all romanticize it so much, and you gaslit people like me who said this shit, who, who would just look at this shit and be like, yeah, this doesn't make any sense. Um, and just the way that you guys romanticize these relationships that are so corrupt, it, it doesn't even matter. Like, it, 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 it don't even matter. It, it don't even matter. It, it's just, it's just, so, I don't know. I just, I don't know. We are in very dangerous territories for women right now. I think like the dating scene is just, it's such a dangerous territory now. Um, with the way these girls promote this type of lifestyle and romanticize it. And you have all these girls these young girls who are watching who are so impressionable and they want to be in their shoes and they don't understand what comes with being with men in this business, which leads me to 50 Cent and Daphne Joy. Um, you know, I'm all for Diddy. I, I, I'm all for 50 Dragon Diddy. Like I'm all, I'm all here for it. Like I'm here for it. 
I'm here for it. I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Side note, it's so funny because you don't ever see anybody telling Diddy that he's laughing at a black man going down or he's bringing down the black community. You don't ever see that. You only seen Stevie J say it because Stevie J got implicated in the lawsuit as well. But um, how do y'all feel about Diddy dragging his baby mama? I didn't. I thought the the you know you little sex worker comment. I thought it was funny. I did until I saw Daphne's Insta stories and she made some really serious allegations in her Insta stories. And then when I did my research, I found that this is not the first time that Daphne Joy has made serious allegations against 50 Cent. Um, how do y'all feel about that? And I love 50. 50 is my birthday twin. I love him. I do think that when someone is your child's mother, I think you should protect them. I do. I do. Even if she was over there being a pink powder puff girl for Diddy too. I think you should protect her. That is the mother of your child. And I don't know. I don't think it's healthy to know that one day your son is going to see that. Your son is going to be able to look up and see how you treated his mother. And I don't think that that's cool. I don't think that that's healthy. Um, and it teaches your son how to treat women. Like you're indirectly, well, you're directly teaching your son how to treat women with the way you treat his mother. Now, you know, I don't know Daphne Joy personally, but I know a lot of tea about Daphne Joy just from being online, okay? Yes, she's been with several rappers, entertainers, whatever. The girl is a gorgeous girl. So I get why she's, you know, once you're in the industry and you're dating these guys, they kind of pass you around. And, you know, I'm pretty sure, you know, like she's already in the industry. She's already, you know, amongst these men. Like, you know, she's going to see, you know, who she can lock in, I guess. I don't know. I just feel that, again, and not trying to say she deserves this type of treatment, right? But I just want y'all to understand the men in this industry, <laughs> these are not the men that y'all want. These are not the men that y'all want to be in a relationship with. These are not men who are known for being upstanding guys to women. The Diddies, the 50 Cents, you know, like the, 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 the Trey Songs, the Chris Browns, like all these guys, like they're not men who are known for chivalry, for, for respect towards women. They're not known to treat their women like queens. Like they're not known for that. They're not known for that. A lot of these men in this space, these athletes, these entertainers, they have access to so much money and they have access to so many yes men and yes women. You're just another speck. You're not special. You're not special. Look at Diddy. Ever since Kim Porter died, it's always Kim this, Kim that, the greatest love of my life. And he treated her like total garbage when she was alive. His twins are the same age as... Uh, I believe he has another daughter, their same age, and th and that mother was best friends with Kim. Allegedly, 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 allegedly. This is all alleged. Well, that's true tea. Allegedly, just in case. But that was her best friend. Like, these guys that y'all romanticize and fantasize about being with, this is what this comes with. Please be clear. This is what you're signing up for. Okay? This is what you're signing up for. The futures, the drakes, like, this is what you're signing up for. They're not here to treat you like the queen that you are. You are there to be their sexual doormat. You are there to be their pink powder puff girl. You're there to be their Ghislaine Maxwell. That's what you're there to be. Get that through y'all skulls. Okay, if this is what you if this is what you want, this is what you're signing up for. But um, let me know what you think about Fifty, um, you know, and his and, and Daphne Joy. I, I don't know. I I think 
50, don't take that lady child away. And you, and you have the money to make it happen. Don't do that. Don't do that. That's, that's, that's hitting so low. That's hitting so low, birthday twin. I, I, and I get it. You, you, you want to prove a point. But don't do that. Don't do that. Don't take that lady child from her. That's pretty crazy. Because even him, he said she moved closer because she was like, oh, we moved closer to you so you could be in your son's life. And in the, in, the, in the couple years that we were up there, you only saw him 10 times. And 50 Cent's rebuttal was, I was busy. And we know what 50 Cent's relationship with, is with his oldest son. Like, baby, you're you not, you not taking the son because you're really about to spend quality time with him. Leave that baby with his mama, okay? Don't do that. Don't do that, 50. Come on. Don't do that, Curtis. Okay, let's get into Diddy's finances for a bit. So I've been saying this for a minute on my channel. And if you've been following me and every time I've covered this Diddy stuff, I've told you, I do not think that Diddy is a billionaire. Um, I thought that his money has been funny for a minute. So remember the Diageo lawsuit. I wanted to bring this up before I get into his latest financial woes because I saw... Uh, some clips from different men that are online that have podcasts saying that Diddy's demise started when Diageo filed their lawsuit and Diageo was trying to get him for the whole Ciroc thing. And I'm like, see, y'all don't read. Y'all just get online and y'all say anything. Diageo didn't sue Diddy. It was Diddy that sued Diageo, okay? Right here in Variety, um, the latest in this whole dispute between him and Diageo, they wrote an article January 16th. Sean Diddy Combs and Diageo resolve legal dispute. And I just want to show it to you guys so you guys can see for yourselves. Sean Diddy Combs, Diageo resolve legal dispute, okay? Sean Diddy Combs and Diageo have resolved all disputes. Both parties announced on Tuesday morning. So this is back in January. Apparently ending long and complicated legal battle wherein Combs alleged the liquor giant had not supported marketing agreements involving Ciroc Vodka and De Leon Tequila. The parties announced a resolution in a brief statement severing their, severing their business ties. Sean Combs and Diageo have now agreed to resolve all disputes. Between them, Mr. Combs has withdrawn all of his allegations about Diageo and will voluntarily dismiss his lawsuits against Diageo with prejudice. The statement attributed to both parties reads, all right? So that means he can't, he can't sue them again, right? And mind you, this came after the Cassie lawsuits, okay? Mind you, Cassie filed her lawsuit in November. Within 24 hours, did he settle with her? This is a billionaire, right? Or this is supposed to be a billionaire, okay? And even if he's not a billionaire, did he got money? And if he doesn't have liquid money, he has assets that he can sell in order to have that liquid, right? For him to settle that lawsuit with Cassie within 24 hours, do y'all remember the allegations? Do y'all remember the allegations? The allegations were horrible. We're talking about sexual uh, enforced imprisonment, trafficking. It was, it was crazy. The allegations were crazy. So for him to have settled that within 24 hours, that told me everything I needed to know about this man. There were things that he did not want the public to know. There was going to be too, too much information, too many other names implicated. He did not want to risk that. He couldn't, he couldn't, he couldn't. Um, Sean Combs and Diageo have now agreed to resolve all disputes, uh, disputes between them. Mr. Combs has withdrawn all his allegations about Diageo and will voluntarily dismiss his lawsuits against Diageo with prejudice. So he can't sue them again. Um, the ongoing business relationship either, blah, 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 the statement attributed to both parties reads, Diageo and Mr. Combs have no ongoing business relationship either with respect to Syrah Vodka or De Leon Tequila, which Diageo now solely owns, period, okay? Mind you, Diddy sued Diageo in May 2023 in New York Supreme Court in Manhattan, allegedly, alleging that the company, which also distributes Johnny Walker, Captain Morgan, like all your faves, had neglected the spirits under their joint control. And his lawsuit clones alleged that Diageo had not given Ciroc and De Leon the same kind of marketing and promotion it had given other properties in its portfolio. He alleged 
Diageo had undermined the business by marketing Ciroc and De Leon as urban rather than something for the general market. Okay? So he was basically saying, Diageo is calling me the N-word. Okay? They're calling me a nigga. They're calling me the N-word. Okay? Them was the allegations. Okay? Mind you, mind you, they responded and said, yo, we are saddened that Mr. Combs has chosen to recast a business dispute as anything other than that and chosen to damage a productive and valued partnership. Diageo said after filing the suit last year, they had to counter suit. They also had said Diageo believes strongly in Ciroc and De Leon brands and remains committed to their success, which is why we tried for years to salvage the broken relationship with Mr. Combs. We funded the purchase of De Leon for the joint venture and proceeded to invest more than a hundred million dollars to grow the brand. Despite having more, uh, despite having made nearly a billion dollars over the course of our 15 year relationship, Mr. Combs only contributed a total of a thousand dollars and refused to honor his commitment. These were things that they had receipts for. Mr. Combs only contributed a thousand dollars towards his commitment. So imagine 15 years, uh, uh, Diageo invested a hundred million dollars, turned his two brands into billion dollar brands. And this man only gave a thousand dollars towards this, but that tracks because mind you, this is the same man who has how many artists that have come forward the last 30 years talking about how he jipped them out of their money. Allegedly, 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 allegedly. This is all alleged, allegedly, <laughs> allegedly. He been gooping the kids out their money for years, for 30 years. So it tracks, it tracks. And so they were in this battle together. And then here comes Cassie with her lawsuit. If you've been following me and I was following this, as soon as she dropped that lawsuit, I said, oh, they gonna come back. They gonna come back. Because Diddy had made some filing um, where um, the judge was, gonna, was going to actually let this go to court. Diageo didn't want it to go to court. They wanted everything sealed. They wanted to just settle everything. He was like, nah. And then Cassie came with her lawsuit and he lost every brand deal. Every brand deal, one by one. Diageo was like, thank the Lord. Okay? So I just wanted to bring this back up because Diageo did not take Diddy down. So now, uh, it came out the other day. Daily Mail uh, wrote this article. Um, when was this published? March 29th. Okay? March 29th. Diddy owes the bank nearly $100 million after taking out eight mortgages on his three extravagant homes in Los Angeles and Miami that were raided by Homeland Security. The article reads, Diddy has borrowed an eye-watering $150 million from multiple banks to pay for his extravagant property empire, raising questions as to whether he really does have a billion dollar fortune. What have I been saying? You don't have no money. Y'all gonna learn to listen to me. Y'all is gonna learn to listen to me. Okay? It could be the biggest home loan amount ever taken by a Hollywood star as a 54 year old has needed several mortgages to fund the purchase of three luxury mansions in Los Angeles and Miami, which is so hilarious because this video dropped this week of him diddy bopping all over his Miami mansion. Okay. Getting his take that, take that, take that on. Meanwhile, you are in debt, $140 million. You just sold all your shares to Revolt. You don't have Syrah. You don't have De Leon anymore. And something tells me in that settlement, you got to pay them too. Allegedly. 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 This is all alleged. Allegedly. Okay?
All three were raided on Monday by Homeland Security after mounting sexual harassment and rape lawsuits with agents, ransacking the homes, taking away boxes and bags of evidence. Nearly a hundred million dollars is still owed by the rapper, producer, entrepreneur, which is due to be paid back within the next few years with one $23 million no, with one $23 million loan needing to be settled by 2029. This don't sound like this don't sound like billionaire activity to me. Look at these homes too. Like, mmm. Look at this one home. He purchased his LA home for $39 million August 2014. Then he bought side-by-side -side luxury estates in Uber Wealthy Star Island uh, in Miami. He took out several mortgages for each. Child. I guess this is the home raid. This is some of the footage from the home raid that we're looking at here. Diddy's money is very funny. Diddy's money is very funny. And you know what else I like to add to all this Diddy stuff? It's just really interesting to see black folks say things like, oh my God, look at y'all. Oh my God, y'all are enjoying the downfall of a black man. We're the only people who do this. Black people are the only people who do this to their own. Are y'all not paying attention to what's happening in white people news? The, whenever I see black people saying this, it, it, it tells me everything I need to know. Y'all are actually not looking at the news. Y'all not going to the New York Times. Y'all not going to the Washington Post. Y'all not going to, shoot, the NY Post, page six. Like, you know, CNN, y'all are not going to these big outlets. You guys are getting your news from the Shade Room and Neighborhood Talk. Y'all are getting your news from the blogs. Baby, white people are having a massive cleansing right now. Okay? Epstein Island is still a thing. There's still a huge fallout for that. Okay? There, it's still happening. Gisele Maxwell is still on the hook. Okay? And then I don't know if you guys have seen uh, Quiet on Set. Baby, the way they put out Jason Handy, Brian Peck, Dan Snyder, all these people, they, they've outed several predators who work at Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon is getting dragged right now for the abuse that these kids and these women were going through under their watch. You have Ashton Kutcher right now who's under fire because he stated he's expecting to get subpoenaed when it comes to Diddy. This is the same Ashton Kutcher, him and uh, his wife, Mila Kunis, who wrote a character letter for their co-star, what was his name? Danny Masterson, who was sentenced to 30 years to life for Mind you, Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis have a whole sexual assault awareness uh, 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 nonprofit that they started. But here they were caught red-handed writing a character witness letter for their co-star, defending him and asking the judge to have leniency when it came to his sentencing. This is the same Ashton Kutcher now who is expected to be subpoenaed for the Diddy stuff. Okay? What does that tell you? What does that tell you? What does that tell you, y'all? Let's use our brains. Let's use our brains. You have Rebel Wilson right now who just outed Sasha Baron Cohen for degrading her sexually while filming. Like, white people are getting their cleansing on too. This is for everybody. It's up for all the predators, all the sexual, all the sexual harassers, like it's up for everybody. It's going on in everybody's community. This is not just a black man thing. And again, it's just really astonishing to see the grace that black people have for black men who face these types of allegations. Oh my God, y'all are bringing down a black man. What about their victims who are black? Why don't y'all care about their black female victims and their black male victims and their and the children? Why don't y'all care about their victims? The grace y'all will give men and y'all will do things like write op-eds on Amanda Seals for being mean. Literally, literally hang somebody like Amanda Seals for being mean. Yet these are these allegations are decades old. This is not new. Nobody's shocked by this Diddy stuff. Nobody's shocked.
Nobody is shocked. Okay? Yet, y'all give so much grace to men. Like, I really wish y'all would have this type of grace for women. Literally, like, women get called bitches and they're mean and they get castrated to the side. They lose their entire careers just for having a bad day and having a bad attitude. But these men can come in, they can they can steal, they can kill, they can do God knows what. They can cause all types of harm in our community and it's still He's a young black man. Don't tear a black man down. Like it's just so weird. It's so weird. Y'all, as I am making this video, child, as I am making this video, uh, King Combs just got hit with his own lawsuit, child. It is an exclusive from the Jasmine brand. Christian Combs, lawyer of victim accusing Diddy's son of and drugging her says, we have pics of my client's injuries. This is pretty crazy because his birthday, I believe, was just this week and he was just diddy bopping and carrying on and as if his daddy just didn't get raided and as if he wasn't just in handcuffs at his daddy house, like while his daddy was trying to escape to the Caribbean. <laughs> Y'all, this is just insane. Um, the story reads this, as we've been covering Sean Diddy Combs to the fore is currently fighting sexual assault lawsuits. Uh, the recent $30 million suit from the music producer Rodney Low Rod Jones ushered in multiple new claims against Diddy, including allegations his son, Justin Combs, helped recruit underage girls for the music mogul. So Justin is Misa's son. Uh, Justin Combs has since denied those allegations via a statement from his attorney that said Justin Combs categorically, categorically denies these absurd allegations. They are lies. These, this is a clear example of desperate person taking desperate measures in hopes of a payday. There will be a legal consequences uh, for all defamatory statements made about the Combs family. All right. Unfortunately for the record executive, another one of his children is per... Unfortunately for the record executive, another one of his children is reportedly about to be hit with serious allegations of his own earlier today, April 2nd. A report surfaced that Christian King Combs, 26, will be named in a lawsuit that accuses him of and a woman. The alleged victim's attorney, Tyrone, Tyrone Blackburn. Baby, Tyrone Blackburn is uh, working overtime. Baby, if you got a assault case, baby, call Tyrone. Call Tyrone. Call. It's, it's, it's two lawyers. It's Cassie's lawyers. And it's Tyrone Blackburn. He has several of these lawsuits and he's had them over the years. I follow him on socials. Uh, Blackburn added, I provided Sean Combs attorneys, Sean Hawley and Jonathan Davis with a photo of my client's injuries. All of this will be in the filing. We are finalizing it and it will be filed within the coming weeks. Damn, why you ain't just filing? Why are you telling the Jasmine brand though? Mm. The identity of the woman accusing King Combs of sexual her has yet to be revealed no word just yet on how the rising rapper feels about the looming suit however he did recently share a stop the cap post on his uh, snapchat <sighs> when it rains it pours baby black women's history month was my lord and april fool's month is coming in with a bang ain't it but let me tell you something right now. For those of you guys, again, who be emailing me talking about, oh my God, how can you really sit there and laugh at a black man's demise? Baby, if that black man is a predator, I am throwing a party. Okay? Hey, well, why not we saw hey, I will be celebrating all. It might be April Fool's month, but you can't fool my black woman ass month, okay? Baby, I will be celebrating all up and through black women ain't no fools black women month, okay? Y'all, let me know what y'all think about these stories that I put together, child. Drop that in the comments, let me know your thoughts. Make sure that you follow just a couple things on IG, and um, I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. These diamonds on my body and they crystal clear. crystal clear I make magic with these hundreds, watch them disappear uh -huh. Big ol' raindrops up in my ear If you gon' name drop, let's get it clear Jesse, woo!